Yes, welcome to the Celtic View podcast from the Acor Stadium in sunny Sydney, Australia, where the Celts are down under for this tour of the Sydney Super Cup. So with that in mind, we won't have our usual podcast with you this week, but instead what we do have is a brand new Celtic View magazine coming out next week packed full of exclusive interviews and features. So what we thought we'd do is give you a sneak peek at one of those interviews that will be in the magazine with Josip Juranovic, who of course is off to the World Cup with Croatia and he sat down with us before flying out for the magazine to talk about everything about his early life, his career and obviously his time at Celtic. So hope you enjoy this interview and do join us again next week and hopefully we'll be back in the studio to give you your normal podcast. Just be interested to know a little bit about what life was like for you when you were growing up in Zagreb and your kind of early memories of football. Yeah, uh, I started to play football in uh, Dubrava uh, with my older brother. Uh, and then after I was only watching Barcelona in that time, I didn't care about anything else, anybody else. I was only Messi, Xavi, Iniesta, my trio Fantastico. But uh, after that, when I was growing, growing older, uh, I get a call from Hajduk Split. Um, then I was thinking about that with my family and everything, and we decided that I will move th three and a half hours drive with a car to Split. I was staying there five and a half years. Uh, I was captain of that club. I'm proud of that also. And uh, because it's a big historical club in Croatia, uh, and then after, uh, Poland called me Legia Warsaw. Uh, after that, I was there only for one year, but they uh, accepted me like uh, like I was there five years, really from the first minute. Uh, I had some players who were speaking Croatian also there, uh, my teammates. Uh, I'm good with them also now. Uh, because of that, I like football. Wherever you go, you will have friendship till the rest of your life. And then after one, one year, uh, I get a call from Celtic. And uh, of course, everybody knows Celtic because Celtic is a massive club in the Europe. Um, Champions League nights, uh, er everybody knows about Larson, uh, then <laughs> Nakamura. Everybody knows about these players and uh, I didn't think twice when uh, I get a call. Uh, I spoke with my agent, immediately he was doing everything that I uh, get here. And uh, after my last game uh, against Slavia Prague in the Europe, qualification of the Europe uh, for Legia Warsaw in the first leg, uh, I was on my plane to Glasgow and everything else did, is history. So see, when you were really young, was it always a footballer you wanted to be and were you always better than everyone else you were you were playing with? Maybe brothers, I don't know what your family is like. Uh, you know, uh, people was talking about that my older brother is, uh, uh, that he has more potential to be football player and, uh, and everything, but he is totally different uh, type of player. He is left winger. He likes to go one against one, shoot on the goal and everything. I was like um, really team player, uh, like, tackle everything, I was doing everything bad for the team. <laughs> uh, but uh, in the first moment I was like number 10, number 8. Uh, I didn't play right fullback in that moment. But my uh, first professional uh, like football game, I was playing number 8 and I was doing well. I was scoring goals and everything. But uh, one of my best coaches, Damir Buric, uh, he told me, look, we have some injury players on the right fullback, can you cover that? And I was like, yeah, I want that. And uh, after that training, tr training sessions, I was just be able to be better as a fullback than uh, like number eight. And uh, now I like that position and I just want to take, uh, to say thank you to my dear friend and the coach, Damir Buric. Yeah, what, who were your kind of idols then when you were growing up? Uh, Lionel Messi. Messi, yeah, but like Croatia at that time had a, a good team in the late 1990s as well, so 
Did you have anyone in, in that team that you looked up to, or was it always the Barcelona team? No, always Barcelona team, always. Uh, but Messi and Dani Alves, I need to admit that, because Dani Alves was having, I don't know, in the season 48 assists just for Lionel and Messi, and I, I was <laughs> watching, and that connection was really wild. Moving to the, the football, when you signed for Celtic, you'd obviously played for Hadjik and, and Legia which are, are two clubs known for having big fan bases as well. So was that an important part when you joined Celtic that you knew that you were going to be joining a club that had such a big fan base that were so passionate about football? Yeah, because in Hajduk Split, the passion about the club is totally similar like here in Legia also. It's, I can say, similar clubs with similar fan base and it's really beautiful to play in front of them because in the bad moments they are behind you, in the good moments they are behind you, and when you celebrate it, they are celebrating. If you are crying, they are crying. And uh, the best moments you can see in the games when we are scoring last minute goals, they are celebrating like it's Christmas Eve. And uh, that's what pushing us further. It seems like it was a bit of a no-brainer for you to sign for Celtic, but you played with a man at Legia who knew Celtic very well and Artur Boric. How much did you speak to him before signing for the club? Uh, to be honest, I was having a fight with him maybe three weeks before when I received a call from uh, Celtic. But uh, after that game, when we had a like, little fight, uh, I spoke with him about Celtic and he was telling to me, if Celtic wants you, you need to go there because it's a massive club, you can go uh, further in your career and uh, the city is good, the fan base is perfect, you will, uh, you will feel that you are at home and uh, the most important, I will play Champions League. You really hit the ground running when you started at Celtic and last season was such an uh, amazing season for the football club. When you look back in the season as a whole, what kind of emotions come to mind? Uh, you know, I was coming from Legia where I won my first championship title and I just want to get the trophy uh, again and uh, when I have that possibility in the cup games I want to take that trophy back in my hand. Then when we have possibility in the championship, when I was coming here we was in sixth place on the table and then after that everything turned around and we start to winning, start to smash the opponents and was really perfect to play our system and everything. And uh, in the end, uh, the best team wins and uh, last year we was the best team. And we are looking forward to this season because we can win a tri uh, triple, three trophies. And uh, for me, I think if you win three tr trophies in your country, that you are the best team here and uh, because of that we are here. You grew up watching Barcelona and Dani Alves, not comparing Celtic to Barcelona, but Celtic plays such an uh, exciting attacking brand of football that for you as a fullback as well, you're always going forward. Just how much joy and excitement do you get as a player playing in this type of system and football that also wins trophies? Uh, that's everything what we dream about when we were kids. Uh, you know, especially now in Champions League, you can see that uh, Vinicius was talking about our football. Modric was talking about football and atmosphere. Uh, Cross also. Uh, I think that everybody who was facing us on Celtic Park can see that we are Champions League level, that we are playing football, what they want also. And they are playing. And uh, I can say that we are a strong team enough that's next year will go stronger in the Champions League. Did you speak to Modric at all after the games about his experience of playing against Celtic and at Celtic Park? Yeah, yeah. Uh, after the game immediately he was saying that uh, with these fans you can do everything but you need experience also in this level because uh, the chances what we had, we didn't score. They had maybe half of the chance and they scored because of that. That's experience in the, the biggest game in the world, the Champions League nights because against, I don't know, in championship against, I will not name the clubs and everything, but you can just be relaxed and everything because you have that, you believe in your friends and everything. But in the Champions League, you believe your friends, but you need to 
step up and uh, show yourself in the big nights. Were you surprised at all by the atmosphere of the Champions League nights at Celtic Park as well? Uh, yeah, yeah, it was crazy. In the first uh, item of the Champions League, I was looking on the stands and the faces was like, ah, it was just, I see the, the mouth was going like this. I was like, oh, wow, that's something different. But after that, when you feel the ball and everything, you don't think about that. You just uh, want to play football and that's it. Yeah, there's still so much to try and achieve this season as well. But when you look back so far at your time at Celtic, is there any particular games or moments that stand out for you? Uh, yeah, first, my first Champions League night, because it was my first also. Uh, and uh, especially against Rangers, uh, when we won uh, first my home game against them. 